And we're back in the game with some more Divide and Conquer Third Age Total War, playing as the Dwarves of Erid Ruin, Dwarves of the Blue Mountains. We are currently at war with um, something resembling this chap, uh, the Witch Realm of Angmar. Right. I don't think we've had a battle in the last two episodes, but uh, we should get a battle in this one. Uh, get some fast interns. There's only a couple of war units in there, there are no buildings. And Angmar's already tried to capture the settlement and cause some damage. Walls. Got some more troops coming along. There's that Angmar in fleet that's blockading us. See that Angmar does in fact have Barketa, but he may leave that alone. It's really worth much, and I'm kind of hoping that uh, the High Elves or Bree or the Dunedain will push up in this direction. Once these factions get going, uh, they usually unite to push back Angmar. Angmar does uh, expand quite rapidly because there's a Lot of rebel sediments for them to expand into, and they will push back uh, the Dunedain free. But once they start facing uh, better quality units like the dwarves and the elves, they'll start losing battles and become weaker. Now, where are the diplomats at? Uh, down here, but which direction were you heading? Question, you're heading north. I'll see you talk to up there. Uh, economy, pretty good going. And trade, I think we're trying to get the mines in there. Mining network. I think we need two turns to pay for that. It's like 5500, 51. So, Let's go ahead and end the turn. Once we do take Furost, Angmar will definitely come for us and we'll be in battle against Angmar for many, many turns. Some people are going to consider this to be a somewhat boring campaign because it's fairly predictable once you choose to uh, stay loyal to the other good factions. Basically only end up fighting against Angmar Ah, Angmar has actually attacked us. Wait, was that an Angmar settlement? Ah, yes, it may have been. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, we've oddly been attacked by Captain Harfast. But if that is an Angmar settlement, they're not selling out. Kind of looks like the same faction symbol. Right, we're facing only human troops. No wargs and no ranged units. They're going to have a hard time. They do have some dangerous units because Rudar Savages are armor piercing. Effective against armor because they have uh, a war mace. Even the hillmen have axes. It doesn't say that they're good against uh, armor, but I suspect that they might be. So. Let's go and have this battle against Angmar. Yeah, that's definitely the an Angmar settlement, isn't it? Why did their garrison not come out? Hmm. Anyway, we've got a good defensive line here. Pikemen are exceedingly good against the wolves facing later on. Now, crossbowmen are very good, however, you in fact need the height advantage to get the best use out of them from um, up here. That. You have some dwarven travellers who can actually fire over our units. As the enemy doesn't have any ranged troops, I don't mind putting the pikes a lot further forwards like this. 
and our militia units form shield wall. A rather thin wall, but it's very, very sturdy. Just in case they come in this direction. Now, keep our cavalry out of the way at the moment. Some dwarven labourers, good against armour, but none of these units that we're facing have much armour to begin with. We'll just speed this up until they get within range. Now they are coming over on this flank quite a bit. Looking at the lay of the land, we could in fact have uh, deployed where we were along here. But have still had the uh, line of sight with the crossbowmen, I think. Warp and Travellers are useful because they have the arc and shot they can fire over, but you don't get too many of them. You get a lot more crossbowmen in your army. And in fact, these are just the uh, most basic of the Arid Lu and crossbow units. I think there are at least two other higher tier units, crossbows, in their roster. These are the ones I want to kill all. Target them there. To actually firing on. Let's go back to speed. Hit the savages now. Because that's the most dangerous unit to going to be facing here. Them. We'll keep the uh, cavalry out of play. They don't have any skirmish troops to chase down. Just wait until we've broken them. Killing too many savages. Right, hold your line, Pikeman. In fact, get the, these units out here, flank around. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. I don't know how quickly we can break them. Let's see. Into the back of those pikemen. Maybe take them out of the shield wall. The enemy general lies dead. Oh, that's good. That's going to hurt their morale. Yep. They're wavering already. Targeting those Rudar savages. line of sight over there. Luckily dwarves are vertically challenged and you don't need that much of a height advantage to fire over their heads. Right, some routing units. Cavalry, after those. They don't rally. Only half the enemy force remains. Give our generals some experience. 
one doesn't have any. This one has triple silver. I think that's uh, Na, our starting general. Or was Na the first one he got killed? That's Garth Helikov. One of our generals did. Right, you're not going to catch them. Putting one guy over there. All those broken. There's a few men from that unit. Yeah, I'm gonna chase them down and wipe them all out. In there and get them. 300 prisoners already. Right, have we routed everybody? So, firing. There. I'll just speed it up. Just five percent. Bad, but then we weren't facing their best units. Nangmar has some very strong units. Uh, very good archers. Very good halberdiers. Got a lot of heavily armoured units, but that's where you use your dwarven labourers against. When you're facing witch knights, uh, our cheap dwarven labourers can take them down very quickly. And it should have broken. We've killed only 79%. You can catch up to them. That's good. There. Uh, are heading back towards our troops. That's not going to end well for them. In fact, he's back on right will. Two. And of course, Angmar has a boatload of war units. He'd love to use them. You have to watch out when they start getting artillery because wolves are a very stationary faction, very defensive. You don't want to be in a defensive position, getting hit long range by artillery, no way to counter them. Because you're never going to have cavalry superiority without bringing those wolves. Merchant cavalry are only good for chasing down units. Really good for breaking in units. Hmm, 24 managed to get away. Still, good victory. It's odd that they didn't sally out from uh, the settlement. We're under siege. You should have used them, because they had at least two war units in there. I'll give them. Good mobility boost. That's some barrel whites on there. Mercy, I'm sure that we had them besieged, didn't we? Wasn't Furos besieged? Huh. Skiliath is under attack fairly often. Campaign. What happened there? I swear we had that under attack. Any more mercenaries? Nope. An Angmar town. Oops. Humidane. There's only one percent dwarf in culture there. Right. I will only your 
Ah, it's pulled back fast. I was hoping to draw those out. Settlement. We have three other units. We're after them. Use a stall. Yes. Got any extra troops to move around? And there. There. Right. I'm assuming that you were somewhere. Head north. There. Right, we'll have enough for that mining complex. Let's turn. At least to get it started, that is. If we get attacked, we go um, Furost again. There's going to be a lot of battles around Furost. At least uh, when I played version 2 and 3, I always had a lot of battles around there. It's a stalemated settlement for many turns. We could finally uh, break the power of Angmar. Now, if you do play as Eric Lewin and you accept the rings from Mordor, then I think you have the opportunity to expand down here. There's like an ancient dwarven settlement down here that you have to go after uh, with a store of weapons and uh, tools. But we didn't go that route. Right, so we've got that started. We've still got money left over. We build now Ironmongers. Well, I would like the Ballista Maker. Plus 25% culture, we have 32. Good. That'll give us one Dwarven Laborer. Will be useful. But we do need that extra range from the artillery, and Dwarves have very good artillery. See you, my friend. See if we can get some more money out of them. This proposal yep. is little Victors. Yes. On moving. Of course. Better bump into some people. Some more, see who's up here. I Rohan. What is it you wish to discuss? I do not believe I am able to. Yep. It's rejected. They have reached Bangorn Forest. Not the best place to be if you're a dwarf. Carrying an axe. Right, there is a fort up there that we could occupy. Couldn't quite reach them. Try to order resolve it. Our chance. Yeah, uh, I think so. Plus 24 dwarves. But at least that's extra income. So unfortunately, we're going to have to kill the population there. We get 2,000 for doing it. Resistance is never futile. I don't believe. We want to build up the culture as quickly as possible, but I love getting that stonework as well. Five thousand need. Can't even train anybody there. Right. It's not even going to pay for. Probably one unit. No, it's not. <laughs> Won't even pay for half a unit. Not at the moment. Take some time. I 
can't remember who we haven't traded with. I have to look through the diplomacy tab. I'm sure, we've probably missed somebody. Two star uh, allied to Eribor and Kazadum. Uh, I accept it. Because the AI doesn't normally destroy them if they capture the settlement. Now, who is that there? Nah. Horn. Want you to build a watchtower? Chase away or destroy them? Plus a lot there. Those warp skirmishes. Ah, man of the hour. Great. Right. Let's see. What bigger? The army. Merge up those units. And get you back there. Because we're going to have a pretty big fight on our hands. Diplomacy. Who haven't we traded with? Gondor. We have trade rights. Unidine. Three. Landings, Wave, Rad, hey, everybody, ready, run as a doom, Terrible, Bale, Union, see anybody yet, aren't we? And doing, ah, uh, of, of Florian. To uh, trade with Mordor, Elves. Looks like we're only missing one at the moment. And Moria. Right now, the Dark Lord, he's stuck up there in the top right hand corner of the map. So, you know who you have to trade with? After all, Lothlorien. Moria. Get to Moria. Cutting across here. Here. More money coming in. Despite being blockaded up ports. Is Angmar pushing up south? Uh, the economy, can't do it there. Rather expensive. Any economic buildings up here? Yes, we can get the Elf Haven, get Lindar Mariners. It's going to be expensive as well. All of those are expensive. More watchtowers definitely needed. Keep an eye on this little force down here. Only a 70% chance. Oh yeah, Barrow Whites. That's when you use your Dwarven Laborers against them. Cost effective uh, matchup. Well, they haven't moved. It's good for us. There they go. Turn. Oh, that's the Thunderbad faction. Right. We are going to have a large battle, probably at the start of the next episode then. Oh, now they're moving up. Get back here. 
general so less Keep an eye on him there, or Ang my forces. Let's get that extra trade in. What is it you wish to discuss? This seems quite reasonable. Very well, what else have you got? Some money from them, but this, this diplomat isn't very good. Some money for an alliance. This proposal is of little nope. that seems hopeful. Farewell. Okay. Send you back that way. If you can reach Moria. No orcs. No, you can't quite reach them. Okay. Oh. How tough are they? Can't get any uh, mercenaries. We'll come in as reinforcement though. We've got a decent force here. And break this one. Shouldn't leave too much out here. That's three war units. We do have some javelin men. All fighters have. No, they don't. I don't have javelins. Got one unit of uh, archers. And fairly similar units to what we faced in the first battle. More infantry. Right, I think we can take them. I really do. I got 5300. Don't have any active missions. So, that increases the population as well by 1%. Oh, I'm going to go for that. Let's get that in so we can get some dwarven laborers. Cheap unit. We'll have the list to make the next turn. And we'll get the Ironmonger. Would be nice to have the port, but cheap units. They're only slightly cheaper. The uh, laborers will be 600, as opposed to 640, 650, 680. Right. So, Battle of Furost. Um, next episode, start off. If you'd like to see whether I win or whether I get completely slaughtered and lose two generals, three in fact. Uh, got Foley, not Axel Foley, got Nar, Nar with an N, not a G. Got Orn. So we could lose three of those. Uh, do we actually have a family tree? We do. Foley has come in. She's not going to need a husband anytime soon. One of these girls will. How will you? That's an outstanding beard for a two year old. Not quite as impressive as a uh, Hindler's beard. So, until next time, here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching, and see you later.